Now I'm going to go through feeding. Now feeding's quite quite important when you're fishing down the edge and people just think ah oh, chuck it all in it's actually not quite like that although you do want a lot of bait for when the fish do turn up now there's a massive massive craze at the minute of feeding ground bait down the edge and i've actually <laughs> cottoned onto it as well as everybody else now we've got a sandy bottom on, on here on the sand obviously this is the sandbank of larford lakes and as you can generally see with the color of the ground bait you know it's actually a similar color of what's on the bottom so it looks so so natural to the fish now i think what the way I kick start my peg, obviously it's pointless really feeding it from the start because all I think you're doing is you're wasting your bait. So generally two and a half to two hours to go, what I generally do is I, really, I start feeding my shallow line. So all I do is I've got ground bait which is just mixed, it's just mixed as normal. The ground bait's just mixed as it is and as you can see it's just quite dry. And all I do is I just scoop it out of my bucket like that and I just push it down like that. There's no, no need to make ball up, etc. All I do is scoop it out and just push it down. Now what I generally do is I'll put four pots of ground bait in. A lot of people think that this is a lot of ground bait, but it, in actual fact it's not. So again, same, same with your rod, etc. You cup it in, you pick your far bank marker so you know where you're gonna go, and you just cup it in like that loose. Very, very simple. So I'll cut four, four, four lots in. I'm, and it, I, think, I think you'll notice that I've not put any particles in this ground bait at all and I don't do that to my last pot. As I, as I said earlier, you can control the amount of particles that you put in your peg rather than cupping loads of pellets and corn and things like that and that's how you end up getting line bites and things. So that's, you know, two pots, again people say, ooh, that's a lot of ground bait. In actual fact, I've only mixed up two and a half kilo ground bait, but because of the ground bait that I'm using, the ground bait I'm using today is Karma and Red Cult. So all I generally do is I do that, and then I'll control the amount of particles that I put in my peg. And that's all it takes. Because what it, what's happening is you're putting the ground bait in, the fish come into your peg, there's not that many particles for them to eat, so they eat your hook bait. So I cut this one in. And then just a little trick what I do. Like I said, you've got to get the fish's attention. And as I said, the fish aren't just gonna come down looking for that feed naturally, because again, you know, they don't live down here. So you've actually got to make them come down. Now, one thing I say to people at the end of the match, what do you do? We all chuck us baiting. All of us, we all chuck us baiting. So what I generally try and do is I imitate as though I've chucked the baiting. I actually imitate by, cup, by picking the water up and dropping it in. Just dropping it in from a height. All you're doing, you actually, you're not feeding them or anything, all you're doing is making noise. And to the fish, it makes it looks as though you're packing your gear away. As though you've finished your session and you've chucked your gear and you've obviously you've chucked your bait in. Now I think that the splashing of the water is very, very important because like I said, the fish aren't naturally going to come down there because they don't want to be down there, but they'll come down there if they want to eat. Now by imitating the fact that you've chucked your bait away, it will grab the fish's attention and the fish will come down. They'll see a lot of bait and they'll start competing for food. And that's when, you know, that's when you can go down and you can actually amass a very, very big weight. Now I've got a 14 hook on and all I'm putting is some dead maggots on the hook. Now, you know, if you get to the bank and things like that and you haven't got any dead maggots, I'll show you how to kill them very, very quickly. As you can see, these are live now. The, the maggots that I've got here are live. The easiest and quickest way to kill them is to just roll them on your knee. Just roll them, all of, a, all of a sudden it creates a dead maggot, which makes it be able to put it on your hook. And all that, all, all you're generally trying to stop is the maggot coming back over your hook point. So obviously when they float was under, the last thing you want is your maggot over your hook bait, because you're obviously not going to hook the fish. So as I say, if you get on the bank and you realise, oh no, I need some dead maggots, but I've got some line maggots, the quickest way of killing dead maggots is to just roll them on your knee. Very, very simple. I've actually just cupped in not so long back and I can see I can see a few fish swirling already. And that's what I mean by the importance of cupping that water in. As I say, I think, in my opinion, it's very, very important because the fish, they'll hear the noise and they'll actually just home in on it. So let's see if I can catch one. As you can tell, there's quite a lot of fish in there. I'm getting a few indications, line bites, but I can see an odd swirl and the fish are actually churning the bottom up. So you know there's some fish there. But again, just go back to patience. Don't strike at these silly indications, things, because all you do is foul up the fish. You've actually, the last thing you want to do is foul up a great big fish. As you can, I just saw a tail then. So you know there's a few fish in your peg. 
you know, and it's it's actually a very, very exciting way of fishing is this because, you know, you, oh, and I missed it. Just drop the rigging again. Just drop the rigging. As you can see, the, the actual rigging in settling itself, which, you know, you know there's a few fish there. The swirling, just, just pull it. You know, if your rig ain't gone in properly, it's so important to make sure it's down there so the fish can actually, you know, home in on your maggots and eat it. Going back to it, I think it's a very, very exciting way of fishing because you can see the, you know there's some fish down there and it's just a matter of time before the, the actual hunt out that hook bait. You're getting them silly indications and things. Just ignore them, you know, let, let the float go under properly. Make sure the fish has got it in the mouth before the actual, before you strike. I say just be patient you know and, oh a little swirl there so you know there's a fish there this is ha very very good fish you know, it don't take you long to amass away from down edge Lovely, lovely fish. And, and and I know, you know, generally what you try and do while you're playing this fish, just take your time, get it in the big fish. But I just generally try and look back down, look for swirls and things like that, just to see if there's any fish still there. You know, and I say that it's a nice common, lovely common. And you can see why you can amass a big weight very, very quickly. You know, that, that didn't take long to come down that ground bait at all. And again, now that you know that the main thing, the main thing, what you need to do now is feed, and and that's a, that's the thing that you don't see a lot of people do straight after they've caught a carp. Right, we'll just have a quick look at my rigs because again, I think one of the most important factors of edge fishing is getting your rigs right. You know, I see a lot of people, um, you know, they, they haven't quite got their edge rigs right, and, and I think it's a very important factor. Now. Obviously, the last thing you want to do is have breakages and things like that on your floats. Now, the floats that we do at Frenzy, uh, FPA hundreds. Uh, basically, what these are, they've got they've got a carbon stem, obviously, which is nice and solid. They've got a lovely hollow bristle, so you can see it in any light. And what actually happens with these floats is they've got a, they've got a metal eye and the line actually runs through the body as well. So, in actual fact, it's very very difficult to break this. You can't put. It's impossible to pull the eyes out because like I said, it's got a metal eye plus the line runs through the body. I see a lot of people not putting enough silicone on the float. You put enough silicone on and on your last piece, always have it overhanging. Always have it overhanging like that. Because basically what happens is when it's like that, you'll be very surprised how quickly that bottom, the bottom of the carbon stem rubs onto your line like that, which obviously creates a weak spot in your line and eventually your line will probably break. By having an, an overhang, which is what I've got, it's impossible for that to happen. You know, and, and, I, and it don't matter what level you're at, I do see a lot, a lot of people with, not, with no overhang on that bottom, on that bottom rubber. Going back to the line. Now the line I'm using, I always use, for down for my edge rigs, I always use a nice thick sturdy line. And I, uh, in this case, I'm using 021 Vertex line. This line's never let me down. It's a, it's a fluorocarbon line, um, and I think it's extremely strong. Um, I have two, two back shot. Basically what they're doing is they're just stabling the rig. So when, you're, when your rig's actually in the water and there's a tow or anything like that, these back shot again, just stable that rig, make sure it doesn't move. Now in this instance where it's very, very, very shallow, I, th I think it's quite important to have quite a, quite a long piece of line between your pole tip and your float. Now, now as you can see there, I've probably got, what, nearly two foot of line. Now a lot of people might think, you know, that that's that's quite a far away but in my opinion because you've got these back shot which control your rig you're able to actually pull the pole tip away from the reds which makes the fish feed very very confidently now just running down the rig all i've literally got is again a very very simple rig it's just a bulker shot now this this rig you might think is quite quite you know it's quite heavy for down the edge now in my opinion i found that that these heavy rigs are quite a lot lot better I did start on a 0.2 float when I, when I fished this lake last time and I found that when the fish were coming into my peg the rig were getting wafted about which again all it, all it does is create foul looks fish which in my opinion is the worst thing you can do when you're fishing down the edge. By having that bulk of shot and having that little heavier rig your, your hook bait goes to the bottom 
and when the fish comes in the peg it's the less chances of your hook bait wafting about because obviously there's more shot on your line which makes you which makes your hook bait stand to the bottom now going down again i always have hook lengths on as i mentioned earlier always no matter what rigs it is again it's the same material 017 vertex line to a 14 hook a nice strong hook you can't you know the last thing you want is that the hook the hooks bending etc big fish down the edge the, what you need is a, a nice big strong hook in this instance it's a 14 which again like i say i can put out six eight ten maggots on you know dead maggots things like that nice big hook bait what the fish can actually see we're just going back to the elastic the elastic again is hollow because i think it's very very forgiving it's our green hollow which is around i'd say 15 you know around a 15 16 grade mark which like i say this is i found perfect for fishing down the edge um, it's hollow like I said when you hook the fish less disturbance when you do actually hook one the fish will swim out you can keep get it under control very very quickly by using again by you just using a pullable so I'll just put that down I know I can see an odd swirl still there so that I know that there's fish there but what you're generally trying to achieve people I know I can see a lot of people will go straight back on there because they can see a lot of fish but what happens is when you do hook a fish it actually boat you know it, it makes the ground bait go over such a large area that 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 you know the fish are actually actually covering a large area and all i'm generally trying to achieve by putting some more bait down there is actually getting them under my you know under me under my pole tip so again basically all i've done is i've scooped a, a cup of ground bait out and again like i say i'm come i'm actually dictating what sort of particles i put into it I can actually see a tail now it's actually unbelievable but as I say all I'm doing is putting this in there so so I can actually get the fish right under my pole tip so they're not searching such a massive area I'll put this in they'll home straight on in it and then when my up bait goes under my pole tip hopefully I'll catch again So again, I'm just rebaiting my hook. I've just generally put about seven or eight maggots in a bulk like that. And all it generally is, is just a big, big hook bait. So the fish, it's just visibility more than anything. As I say, I've put a very limited amount of particles in there. So when the fish do come in the peg, nine times out of 10, they're gonna actually see your hook bait. I literally just put it in and I can see a few tails there. They're very, very they're feeding very, very confidently. And like i said before it's such an enjoyable way of fishing and it's so exciting because you can actually see the tail so you know that there's fish there you know the amount of times that you're fishing out or you're fishing other methods and you can't actually see what see what's happening under the water with this method you can see that there's fish in your peg so it actually you know it excites you it gets you going oh and i'm and there it's another one and that's but as i say i've literally just cut that ground bait in up and they've come into it so so quickly and the thing is there's such big fish down the edge you know you need the gear to actually control them when you do hook them you know i i it's as a, again going back to it it's so exciting because i actually saw that fish come in and i saw it tail up on the bait so you know that it's there and it's just a matter of waiting for it to pick your up bait out but as i say with this ground bait approach you let you know you're more you're making the chances a lot lot more of them picking your hook bait out because I've, I've actually controlled the amount of particles I've got in I've got a big hook bait on so the chances are they are going to pick your hook bait on they are going to pick it up you know so when it does come in the peg it'll be rooting through it's come down to feed it's come down for nothing else purely to feed it's actually found my hook bait again straight away it's found my hook bait and there it is and it went straight under and I saw, I actually saw it, and I believed it to be a miracle because I saw it come in the peg, and that's what makes this fishing so so exciting. As I say, with this style of fishing, just take your time. Get you know any fish that you hook, no matter what you're doing, just take your time and make sure you get them in. Because when the big fish like this, you actually don't need that many fish. You know, you can soon soon build the weight up with these with this size of fish. But you can see the importance, you know, of feeding the ground bait when you hook a fish. You know the splashes and the things like that that happen in the peg it pushes the ground bait in a massive massive area and that's why it's so so important once you've caught one to feed again so that so you can concentrate them in one spot the feed in the one spot as i say I, when you're playing these you know this stamp of fish when it's you know when it's big fish and things like that not just down edge in general i think it's very important to just keep that pole tip low you know 
it really you know it reduces breakages and things like that in your top kit i see many many people hook a fish they pull it up you know they actually pull the top kits in there and that actually creates breakages by keeping this pole tip low and just submerged under water and under there the elastic's running smoothly and it's the elastic that's doing all the work you know and that's what we put elastic in top kits for obviously you know we want it to do all the work the last thing we need to be doing is pulling it up here and things like that because the harder we pull obviously the harder the fish is going to pull just let the elastic do work keep your pole tip nice and nice and low till you get it near your net and that's when you and that's when you lift your pole tip up as i say just keep that angle just keep it nice and low you know the other good thing about it you know if you were to pull out you know if you were to lose the fish etc your rig won't go flying up in there you know, by the time it's, it's come back through the water, you know, nine times out of ten, you'll probably end up with a full rig still. That's it. Nice, nice minute. Oh, and I've just managed to scoop it. Like I say, it's not a bad stamp fish. I actually did see it coming to the peg. And that's why it's... Oh, there's still fish down there now. 